This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Is there anybody here today who's glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Is there anybody who got up this morning and saw the rain and said, I'm glad I've got another chance and I'm going to beat my way a path to the house of worship? And I just want you to know, my brothers and sisters, as I look out and I see the faithful coming out even in the rain, that I go to the game because I like my team. I go to work because I got bills. I go to school because I need to get my learning. But I come to church in the rain because I believe in my God. Is there a witness who knows that God is good? The Lord is my light. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my everything. I wish there were more people who were not afraid just to tell God thank you. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves as in the manner of some, but come together in praise, worship, and honor of our God. Put your hands together. Lean on those horns. Flash your bright lights because it's time to tell God thank you. To God be the glory for the great things God has done. I'm so happy to be here today. I'm even happier to see you here today because there is no rain, no sleet. No, if the mail will come when it's raining, I know my God's going to show up. Won't you pray with me, oh, eternal and everlasting God, we thank you. God, we thank you because you still sit high and you look low. God, we thank you because you still look beyond every one of our faults to see every one of our needs. God, we thank you for making a way out of no way. God, we just thank you today. We thank you for the angel you stationed at our bedside, our bedside last night. God, to keep every hurt, harm, or danger from us. And, and so, God, we just come to tell you thank you. We thank you for the rain, oh God. We know that with no rain, everything becomes a desert. So, God, we thank you for blessing us even when we didn't ask you. We thank you for blessing us, oh God, in spite of us. God, we thank you for being an anyhow God. Uh, somehow, God, now we welcome you into this place. God, we welcome you into this place. You said where two or three are gathered in your name that you will be there. God, we've got more than two or three. God, so we know you're here. Welcome into this place, oh God. Anoint this moment, consecrate it to thy will and thy purpose. Let nothing be said that you have not ordered. Let no thought pass our minds, oh God, that you did not plan. God, let no movement happen. Keep our feet still so that we might see the salvation of the Lord. God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. For it is in the mighty, the matchless, the marvelous, and majestic name of Jesus the Christ we offer this prayer. And all of God's children said amen, amen, and amen. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost.
Amen. Won't you keep that up for just a second right there? That's called praise that you're doing even when you're blowing your horn. I see some folk got the windows rolled down so they can wave their hand. I just can't stop praising his name. Amen. Thing about that name Jesus that when I call it, my burdens get lighter. There's, there's something about that name when I call it that, that things just seem to be more accomplishable in my life. I just can't stop praising his name, my brothers and sisters. Amen. 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 One more time for, for the choir today. Amen. Thank you so much for ushering us before the throne. Can't stop. Just can't stop. Praising his name. What's that name? Jesus. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. I just got a couple of announcements right here. I uh, just want uh, you to uh, remember that we are, we continue to be uh, in the space of uh, the commemoration and the celebration, the observation of Black History Month. Uh, some of those, uh, uh, if you can see right to my, uh, to my left, your right, uh, is a picture, a picture, a more accurate picture of what Leonardo da Vinci portrayed. It's right there. We've got brown folk in it, brown folk in it. Amen. Amen. We are talking about Afro-Asiatic people. Amen, somebody. Uh, so, and, uh, and right here, uh, to my right, to your left, uh, there is, of course, right in the center, uh, there is uh, 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 former President Barack Obama. Uh, we've got uh, Condoleezza Rice, uh, who was uh, former Secretary of State, uh, head of national security under the Bush administration. But there are two other sets of groups of people up here. Uh, we have uh, 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 from the church, from the church, uh, some black history being made as we speak. Uh, and many of us on uh, two Tuesdays ago uh, were able to witness, to hear, to listen to them share information about the COVID vaccine. Uh, and they are still, uh, they're still available, my brothers and sisters. If you have questions, you can call the church and either uh, Deacon Brown or Dr. Johnson will get back to you. But I do want you to know that celebrating uh, right here in the, uh, in the uh, church family of Ebenezer Baptist Church, we are recognizing the contributions, the talents, the skills, the ability, the love of uh, Dr. Farris Johnson and Dr. James Brown. Won't you put your hands together and lean on your horns. Amen. 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 They are uh, in the group uh, that they belong to, i.e. doctors, physicians. Uh, if I, and it's one of my prayers, Lord, if we never needed you before, we need you now. We need doctors more than anything now. Amen. Amen. Uh, we also have some neighborhood recipients, uh, 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 people we want to recognize for their continuing contribution. And this week, uh, it's, it's, it's doubly special because uh, they are twins. They are twins. Born and raised right here, they, their offices are right down from uh, down the street from the church, uh, and they are Judge Don, uh, Donnell Green and Attorney Fredrell Green. Won't you lean on your horns to two brothers? Amen. 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 If it wasn't during COVID, I tell y'all to come up and look at the pictures. Two good-looking brothers, too. Amen. 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 And uh, all the way to your left, and all and all the way. Um, uh, all the way to your right and to uh, and right here we have also Mrs. Troutman Mrs. Troutman who has stood tall in our community for a much uh, a very 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 long time uh, and she is and continues to be a beacon of light and strength uh, as we go forward as she holds so much of our history in her living uh, uh, second of all uh, we do want to highlight uh, our uh, our health ministry here at Ebenezer Baptist Church West, uh, they are still standing uh, standing on guard, uh, making sure that we have all the information we need, not just according, uh, not just uh, with regards to COVID nineteen. We thank them for organizing the town hall meeting a couple of weeks ago, but we also want to thank them for uh, for letting us know that this month, according to the American Heart Association, is National American Heart Month, Heart Health Month. 
uh, 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 heart disease uh, amongst African Americans, my brothers and sisters, is a killer. Yes, we have lost far too many lives from COVID-19 uh, as that number continues to climb closer to a half million. But it's important that you also understand that heart disease is the number one killer. It is the leading killer amongst men and women in this country. Uh, uh, for African-American men, African-American uh, adults, I'm sorry, 40% are more likely to have high blood pressure. But amongst African-American women, 60% are more likely to have high blood pressure as compared to other communities in this country. Some of the contributing factors that that disproportionately and negatively impact our community is obesity and overweight, hypertension, high cholesterol, and yes, cigarette smoking, cigarette smoking, amen. Give up those cancer sticks, my brothers and sisters, because it's not just cancer causing, it is also a major contributor to, uh, to heart disease. Uh, so we will continue to, uh, to observe um, uh, uh, Heart Health Month, uh, and they have bags for us, but they won't, we won't receive the bags today uh, uh, because of the because of the weather. Uh, but uh, but but be here next week. They will have information for you to pick up as you exit next Sunday. We also have today. It is Valentine's Day. Somebody lean on your horn because it is Valentine's Day. Amen. 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 If Cupid's arrow has not struck you, it's because you might have been in the wrong place. You got to make yourself a bigger target for Cupid. I'm sorry. No, no, I, I made that up. I made that up. That wasn't a part of my script. But uh, because it is, uh, it is uh, Valentine's Day, uh, even though the weather is inclement today, uh, there will be uh, someone here, Mr. Ice Cream, I think. Mr. Ice Cream, he's going to be here, and yes, your pastor eats ice cream. It doesn't matter how cold it is, how wet it is. Your pastor loves ice cream. And so uh, we will have ice cream for all of our young people who are in, uh, uh, who are here today. Uh, and then even some of the not-so-young folks, some not-so-young folks. Amen. If you're not so young, let me hear from you right now. Amen. 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 I don't know if they got ice cream for all y'all, but keep claiming that. Keep claiming that. It'll be true. It will be true. Um, Two last uh, very quick things. Um, um, we are in the midst of a capital campaign to pay off our mortgage. It is called the Above and Beyond campaign. Why Above and Beyond? Because you have been faithful in your giving, but you've also given above and beyond your regular tithes and offering. You have been giving above and beyond, and we are so thankful to you for your faithfulness to this your church home even some of some people who are not officially members of Ebenezer Baptist Church West you too have been contributing and we are eternally grateful for you we ask that you continue to stay close we are a church on the move but watch this uh, we are we are a little less than halfway there uh, uh, to our goal we have about $251,000 to go, and I know we are going to get it done. So we need more people to step up. There are some folk. There are some folks still amongst us who have not yet made a commitment. We need you to make sure that you are a part of this fight, this fight to pay off our mortgage. And so I just have something very quickly I want you to repeat with me. From inside your car, you can let the window down. Just crack it a little taste. Just crack it a little taste. Uh, but, but just say this with me. I believe we are going to do this. I believe we are on our way. I believe God for the increase. In fact, I believe it's already done. Amen. God bless you, Ebenezer. We're going to ask that the choir come back. As they come back, prepare your hearts and your minds to receive what does say the Lord.
There's no greater love. I am eternally grateful to God that the good news of his love spills over in our lives and in this world. There are people, my brothers and sisters, right now today who may not claim to be members of Ebenezer Baptist Church West, but they are receiving the blessing of our praise and our worship. All because there's no greater love Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, that you never let us down. God, you have never broken a promise. And so we stand ready, willing, and able despite our frailties to give you praise, honor, and glory. God, we acknowledge right now that there is no greater love. For your word teaches us, oh God, that you so love the world. We don't know what kind of love that is, oh God, but we're thankful that there is no greater love. Now, oh God, Bless this message. Allow it, oh God, to liberate somebody from the chains of their own mind. Allow it to strengthen somebody, oh God, where they are weakest. Let it draw somebody in who's been pushed outside. God, we ask that let no one leave here today the same way they came. We offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who have your Bibles, won't you please open up to the gospel according to Mark. Mark is the second gospel in the New Testament, but it is by most scholarly accounts, the oldest of the Gospels. Open up, please, to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, beginning at verse 14, where it reads as thus, And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them, and scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him and he asked the scribes what are you discussing with them then one of the crowd answered and said teacher I brought my I brought you my son who has a mute spirit and wherever it seizes him it throws him down he foams at the mouth gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid so I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out but they could not he answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. 
When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. Thus ended the reading of our scripture today. But I would that you uh, 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 focus with me on that verse 24, uh, where after Jesus redirects the father's statement and he put the onus back on him and and Jesus says to him all things are possible to him who believes and the father said to him Lord I believe help my unbelief I would that you today pray with me behind the topic of faith that fuels our belief. Faith that fuels belief. I don't want you to turn to your neighbor today, but I do want you to look upwards. I want you to look skyward and, and say, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. We continue today in our defining of what it means to truly believe. What it means to believe in the face of all that life throws our way. To be certain, my brothers and sisters, believing must come before having faith. See, there are a lot of things you can believe in in this life. For instance, I believe in my Georgia Bulldogs. See, in spite of what the score might be at halftime, I always believe that my dogs will pull it out in the second half. Yeah, I, I, I believe in my dogs, but my, my faith is in my Jesus. I love my Georgia Bulldogs, but my dogs change every three to four years. And, and they change when the coach changes, the, the philosophy of the team might change so my faith cannot be in my dogs my faith is is what I lean on my faith is what I believe in uh, my faith is 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 where I I, I put everything uh, my faith is in a resurrected resurrected savior who died for me who who defeated death for me who who gives me a right to the tree of life that's where my faith resides and I know we use those two words, belief and faith, interchangeably. And most of the time it won't do us any harm. You see, they are two wings on the same bird, if you will. But, but when we are talking about what we believe, it's important to know that while believing comes before faith, it is our faith. That fuels what we believe. I'm talking fast. I'm going to try to slow it down. I don't want to leave anybody. Watch this. Yesterday on the prayer call, we, we talked about James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, which reminds us that to count it all joy, joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. And, and I just want to, I just want somebody to know today that, that in order to count it all joy, uh, knowing that there are more trials to come, knowing that there's more sickness to come, uh, knowing that death is going to show up someday, what you believe will sustain you while you're going through the go-through. Uh, I said that, that people over here, they're getting this thing, but y'all over here not getting it like I need you to, so let me, let me try it a different way. 
Uh, uh, and this is just for those guys. Y'all already got a check mark for the day. Watch this. Beliefs can change from time to time from one thing to the next. Uh, uh, but over time, your faith ought to get deeper. Beliefs shift when you get more information. But your faith either gets stronger or it gets weaker. Uh, 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 let, me, let, me, let, let me see if I can try it in English. Watch this, watch this. A belief is a strong conviction. But it does not necessarily require you to act. It does not require you to do anything. Now, now you can and oftentimes people do act on what they believe. But, but there is no requirement for action. Uh, 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 let me... Uh, last week in my philosophy of race class, we, we talked about and wrestled with uh, two great Afro-American intellectuals and, and their positions on race. And, and, and one of them was Kwame uh, Anthony Apaya, who, who claims that, that there really isn't anything called race, uh, while, while Thomas Shelby of Harvard... Uh, his notion is that race ought not be automatically uh, a thought of as inherently evil and immoral. And, and while I struggle with both of those notions, uh, what I know to be true uh, is that folk can believe something uh, about other people and never act on it. Uh, uh, you can hold racist beliefs because we are all products of the environment, the American environment in which we live, yet we don't have to act on them. Uh, uh, when I was in New York, I, I used to tell people all the time that I preferred the racism in the South over the racism of the North any day of the week and twice on Sunday because my brothers and sisters are, 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 are in the South, racist attitudes are generally on display. You can take them or leave them, but in the North, you can work with somebody every day. You can have dinner with them at an expensive restaurant. You can travel with them uh, for business uh, and never know that they harbor the deep-seated beliefs of white superiority and black inferiority. But I tell you, what you do in the dark will always come to the light. Let me see if I can say it a different way. William Cullen Bryant once said, Truth crushed to earth will rise again. God don't like ugly, ain't too keen on pretty. What you, what you reap, you will sow. Watch this. Watch this, my brothers and sisters. Faith is different, though. Faith is a muscle. Uh, uh, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Uh, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm at Ebenezer Baptist Church West. Y'all y'all are biblic, biblic, biblically literate. So, so let me tell you like this. Uh, Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Faith is is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And if you didn't hear that one, certainly you've heard verse 6 where it says, without faith it is impossible to please God. Faith is different, my brothers and sisters, because faith includes your beliefs. And, but faith is deeper than your beliefs. Faith is wider than your beliefs beliefs and faith is 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 bigger than your beliefs because faith requires action now, faith demands that you get up off of your rusty dusties and do something now, faith is something that that requires you to make a move dare I go a step further to say to somebody pastorally now, that if your faith now, does not cause you to move now, if your faith does not require an action of you now, if your 
faith does not force you to do something. Your faith is not faith at all. You're subscribed to a deep-seated belief that's not going to get you very far. I've got some doubters in the house today because blood saw who are you to challenge my faith. But James said in chapter 2, verse 17, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Without works, your faith is dead, my brothers and sisters. Uh, I got a few more people on this side. I got to get the back row now. Watch this. I want to move this faith needle today. And you see, our text today finds Jesus has just come down from a mountaintop retreat on Mount Hermon. He's coming down. He was been up there with Peter, James, and John. You see, if you've never believed it before, if you've never taken note before, you ought to take a cue from Jesus who understood that every once in a while, you've got to to step away from everything in your life for some personal refreshment, some personal rejuvenation and just like on off of his retreat just like when you go on vacation and you get back to work on Monday, you find that the work is piled up you find that ain't nobody done nothing while you've been gone. Well when Jesus comes down off of the mountain after vacation he comes down Mount Hermon or for those who went to Sunday school the Mount of Transfiguration he has to step right back into the busyness that he had to escape. He comes down and steps into the middle of a fracas between the scribes and his disciples. And at the center of it all was a brother whose son was possessed by a demonic spirit. And right here, the brother begins to peel a proverbial onion of faith for us in this season of discovering what is at the core of our belief and the, the deeper he went and the deeper our discussion goes it ought to bring tears to your eyes because Jesus asked the scribes what the problem was what had caused such a stir amongst them and the brother spoke up out of the crowd and told Jesus he said teacher I brought you my son he has a mute spirit and can I pull up to the curb right here I just want to put it in park for just a second because I need you to hear what this brother just said. There's something there, a tidbit, if you will, where you can hear something that he's testifying on. This brother said something that all of us should do. He did something that we should all follow suit. This brother brought his problem to Jesus. This brother brought brought his ailing whatever was hurting him and ailing him and troubling him to Jesus what he couldn't solve on his own he brought to Jesus he brought his issues and laid them down for Jesus he knew he couldn't fix his son he knew that if something didn't happen his son would be destroyed but I need you you to know that he brought his son to Jesus and I hope that there are more people in this parking lot today who are more like this man because I know there's somebody who's just like the system in Mark 5 with the 12 year issue of blood you spend all your money here and spend all your money over there and your problem 
has not gone away. You're still bleeding in your faith. What was wrong when you started out has only gotten worse. But I believe that Jay-Z might have said it better a few albums ago in Izzo when he discouraged the young brothers from selling drugs. Jay-Z said, I did that so hopefully you won't have to go through that. You don't have to spend everything you got. You don't have to wear out your faith. All you've got to do is bring your issue to Jesus. Bring what's bothering you to Jesus because watch out. All of the arguing and the fussing and the fighting that was going on was all because the disciples in their increasing faithlessness they were trying to do something that only Jesus could do they were trying to fix a problem that only Jesus could fix the man reminded them when he spoke to Jesus Jesus I brought my son to you your disciples they tried to help him but they couldn't do it so Jesus I didn't leave I'm standing right here because I know you can fix him you can do what nobody else can do now the second thing I need you to hear in this man's testimony that Jesus could heal his son he said Lord Lord he says teach him I gotta back up and stay in the Bible because he didn't say Lord that just tells us that he was an outsider because the followers of the way and the disciples they all called him Lord but the outsiders called him teach him listen to the brother he said teacher I brought you my son he has a mute spirit and that's enough just for us to move forward so I can share with you four things four F's so that we can look more at how our faith helps to develop all of our beliefs are you ready on your mark get sent let's go you've got to watch out my brothers and sisters because there's four things I'm going to give you today no extra charge it's just because you showed enough faith to show up today and so I've got something for you that's going to bless you watch this the first thing that the text demonstrates is that there is a fact fallacy of faith a fallacy of faith uh, there are some mistaken beliefs some unsound understandings that we have about faith that are dispelled in this text you see the whole dialogue between the Father and Jesus is omitted in Matthew and Luke. The same story in three synoptic gospels, but only Mark adds all of the other stuff. The dialogue between the Father and, the, and Jesus is completely left out. In Matthew and look the whole conversation in those two gospels is left out but instead of focusing on that exchange they highlighted they concentrated on the miracle of the exorcism but that wasn't Mark's intention you see Mark does give us the exorcism 
But Mark does not focus on the miracle. The miracle is good stuff. But the miracle for Mark is secondary to the exhibition of faith and belief by the man. Uh huh. Watch this. Uh, for Mark, all of the histrionics of what the demonic spirit does to the boy, the seizing, the, the throwing down, the foaming at the mouth, the gnashing of the teeth, all of those are good parts and they are necessary to tell the story, but they're not the center of the story. They're not the point of the story. Now, the story in Mark is not so much about casting out demons uh, as much as it is uh, about the faith of his father. Now, you see, too many of us, uh, we get caught up in the show uh, and we miss the lesson. Now, in too many cases, uh, Jesus reluctantly uh, performed miracles. Uh, but when he did perform miracles, uh, they were to make unbelievers uh, believe. Uh, that's why John, my brothers and sisters, uh, tell us uh, that blessed is he uh, or she uh, who has not seen yet believes and I know I'm not talking to everybody but I am talking to somebody in this parking lot whose testimony has devolved into one simple statement that you share with everybody and it goes a little something like this I'm waiting on a miracle but I've got some not so good news to you if you're waiting on a miracle it's exactly what Jesus told the people on this fateful day in the gospel according to Mark Jesus said to all of those who were more, more interested in a miracle oh faithless unbelieving generation how long do I have to be with you how long do I have to bear with you? I want somebody to know I believe in miracles and miracles are great but your belief ought not be in a miracle. God's been too good for you. God's moved too many mountains in your life. God's opened too many doors for you. Don't wait on a miracle. Wait on the Lord. Lord, don't wait on a miracle because all you really need to do is believe on the Son. Believe that He can. Believe that He will. That's the fallacy of faith. But don't stop right there. Because it moves from the fallacy of faith to a focus on faith. The man has explained to Jesus just what was happening to his son. And then in verse 22 he says, but if anything can be done, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And that's good right there because Mark is showing us a shift in the text from a focus on the sun with the demonic spirit to a focus on the father's faith. Mark is moving from the dramatics in the story to the development of faith. And see, it's right here in the text, right there, at the end, the, the father has given the details about his son, but then he asked Jesus to have compassion on not my son. He says, have compassion on us and help us. He's, he's no longer giving a report. He's now a wounded believer laying down on the gurney of faith. Check the text out. Watch this. He says, but if you can do anything. Hmm. He, he, he said to Jesus. He said this to Jesus. He said, 
if you can do anything. Uh, he, he said, but if you, Jesus, Savior of the world, all power in your hands, he said, if you can do anything, that in and of itself, my brothers and sisters, tells us the whole story. He said to Jesus, if. If tells us that yes, he acted in faith, but it also tells us that his faith was weak. Hmm? If tells us he started out believing, but somewhere along the way, Doubt crept in. And can I go a little deeper for you? Don't worry if you're not prepared to go this deep. We'll leave you by the banks of the river and we'll pick you up when we come back. But watch this. Uh, not only does if reveal weakness in his faith and doubts in his belief, but if also signifies that what he's really doing is calling Jesus' ability into question. He's calling into question Christ's power to fix what's ailing his son. He's calling into question Christ's power to heal his son, and, and that might seem a little harsh uh, for some of us uh, who are faith challenged, uh, but if we go back to Mark chapter 1 uh, verse 20 uh, and take a look at that old leper uh, who rolled up on Jesus uh, and he started talking to Jesus, uh, but I need you to know uh, that even that leper uh, back in chapter 1 uh, verse 40, uh, he didn't call uh, into question Christ's power he did my brothers he shifted he had a little more faith he said to Christ if you desire it you can make me clean in other words the leper borrowed a page from Jesus' prayer book he said it's not my will but thy will will be done but I need you to know him but watch Jesus shift the focus of the if in Mark chapter 9. Jesus says, oh no you didn't. That's in the DGB revised version. But let me jump back in the Bible. He says, Jesus says to the man, no not if I can. But if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes Jesus redirects the question from focusing on his ability to heal the son and Jesus shifted it to the father's need for faith and deeper belief the father realizes that his son can be healed and will be healed if only only he believed a little more if only he had a little more faith but what the father missed is the same thing that church folk miss come to church every Sunday read your Bible every Wednesday you leave your Bible in the car you know all of the verses that are going to pertain to any situation situation you face but the problem in the father's life is the same problem in your life and it is simply this that is not found in Jesus' ability to do what you ask the problem is not Jesus' power nor is it in Jesus' willingness to act on your behalf the problem is not how 
long you've been praying, the problem is in your unbelief. The problem is in your lack of faith. The problem is when you don't believe the very verses that you've been quoting. Is there a witness who knows that sometimes believing gets hard? Sometimes I know the right verse, but I come up short when I should be believing. I just want you to know that today we're going to clear it up. Stop focusing on what Jesus is doing or is not doing. Focus on your faith. Focus on everything that you bring to the table. Focus on your unbelief. Ah, unbelief. Ah, I know it's Valentine's Day. Ah, but but this faith issue, this faith that fuels our belief, I believe it has power for somebody at church today. See, we've talked about the perils of the fallacy in faith. We talked about the shift of the focus on faith. The text then reveals to us fear and faith. Fear and faith. And I know for most folk that's like oil and water. Uh, there's a lot of dissonance there, a lot of discord there. Uh, in your ears when you hear Fear and faith. Uh, most of us know that fear and faith can't live in the same heart. And if that is true, why don't we act like it? Why does fear constantly beset us? Why does fear constantly, consistently haunt our beliefs and pollute our faith? Faith, my brothers and sisters, weakens, or fear weakens our faith. Fear shunts our faith. Watch the text. Through his tears, the father cries out. Text doesn't say he mumbles or whispers in Jesus' ear. It says that through his tears, he cries out to Jesus, Lord, I believe. Watch, watch this, watch this. Earlier in the text, when Jesus first showed up, he's calling him teacher, like an outsider. But later in the text, after Jesus has shown up and spoken into him he says Lord I believe help my unbelief and that's a mouthful so let me break it down because what we typically see as a positive our Lord I believe begs for a closer examination you see because of what he says after Lord I believe we have reason to pause and reconsider his declaration. How are you going to say, I believe, and turn around and say, help my unbelief? What this guy is really saying, church folk are familiar with. What he's really saying is, Lord, I believe, but my belief is covered in fear. Lord, I believe, but my belief is, is hampered by doubts. Lord, I have faith, but I've never been here before. Lord, I've got faith, but I'm scared. 
Have you ever been there, Ebenezer? Have you ever stood in your hour of crisis on your faith and hoped that it wouldn't give way under the weight of your doubts and fears? Have you ever been there? Hoping and claiming to believe, yet fear grips you. And I know your desire for is, more, is for more faith. But just as we said in the beginning, faith requires you to do something. Faith is not something you have. Faith is what you show. Faith is what you demonstrate. Faith is what you do. We're talking about fear in faith. True faith. True faith. True faith, no matter how big it may be, true faith, no matter how long you've been a believer, no matter how long you've been on the deacon board, no, long, no matter how long you've been preaching, no long, no, no matter, my brothers and sisters, how long you have been in the church, true faith knows just how small in reality it is true faith and the father in this text demonstrates this to a T in the opposite ends of the belief spectrum at the core of what appears to be an oxymoronic statement he reveals at best that he has little faith See, he's not like a lot of church folk. He didn't, he didn't grow up at Ebenezer. But watch him. He says, I believe, help my unbelief. Which to us signifies uh, that it means that that little faith, the little faith that he had, that ounce of faith he could muster up in his crisis situation, had he, he had pushed his little bit of faith to the center of the table. He, he was risking what little faith he had in this moment. He risked everything. He was giving everything he had he was going for broke in this testing of his faith and that might not mean anything to you my brothers and sisters because you've never had a crisis of faith you've never had things go bad for you but might I offer some evidence some proof positive that faith grows when your risk is on God and not on the things of this world just look over at John chapter 3 verse 6 16, there's a story about another father who laid it all on the line with a son, a father who gave everything he had. An old preacher once said that when he gave his son, God had nothing else to give. But I need you to know that John 3:16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and when he gave his only begotten son that was God's way of shifting everything God had to the center of the table God was shifting pushing all of his chips to the center of the table because God believed in us so much because 
God loved us so much and I wish there were more church folk who were willing to risk everything they have for God. I wish there were more believers who would risk everything and shove everything you've got to the center of the table because you believe in God. You're betting everything on a God who is the same yesterday and the same today. You're betting everything on a God who's never let you down. You're betting everything on God because this is not the first time that you've seen what God can do. This is just the next time you've seen that there's proof positive in the text that says all things are possible for he or she who believes your greatest problem my brothers and sisters is not a lack of faith your greatest problem is that you don't have enough faith to believe in Jesus like he believed in you your greatest problem is that you have an abundance of unbelief won't you look at your neighbor through the glass tap on the window and tell them I'm having a little talk with my Jesus I'm telling him I believe but help my unbelief I believe but help my unbelief I believe help my unbelief so we've talked about the fallacy of faith the focus of faith the fear in faith and now as we get ready to have communion want to talk about the frankness of faith uh, that's the transparency of faith uh, it's to tell it like it is of faith. Uh, 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 it may be uncomfortable, but, but the truth, the Bible says, will set you free. See, some of us are caught up in our childhood notions of faith. A warm and fuzzy kind of faith that does not push you to the limits of your faith the brother in the text says Lord I believe but then he says help my unbelief that's frankness my brothers and sisters whole heap of church folk going through but scared to tell somebody going through but scared to take it to God going through and you just hold on to it for yourself but, but this brother says help my unbelief there's an honesty right there, my brothers and sisters. There's a frankness in his own personal assessment of his faith. Facing the master of faith, he sees and admits that his faith is not what it ought to be. And for us today, that simply means that we too must move beyond our prepubescent understandings of faith and believing we've got to let our faith grow let our faith mature it ought not cost us a crisis of come uh, to confront our own unbelief we ought not have to have our back up against the wall before we confront our doubts and our fears see it wasn't easy for that brother to in the midst of his crisis of self, his crisis of unbelief, his crisis of faith to admit before everybody that he was dealing with something. But I'm thankful to God that God, number one, didn't hold it against him. I'm thankful to God that, that the brother in the text was not concerned about what others in the crowd thought about him. I'm, I'm glad that the brother in the text 
was not concerned about what the disciples were going to say. I'm glad that the disciples in the text or the, the man in the text was not concerned about what the scribes thought. I'm thankful to God that he was only concerned about what Jesus thought. Jesus told him that all things are possible to him who believes. And that's what, what broke the brother down. It was his breaking point. There are some folk in the church right now claiming to believe just because you grew up in the church. You're claiming to believe just because you can quote the whole book of Mark. You're claiming to believe. But I need you to know today that your belief ought not be concerned with what other folks think. Your belief and your faith ought not be wrapped up in the things of this world but you ought to know that your breakthrough will not come until you have a breakdown of your faith because when your faith breaks down it gives God an opportunity to build it up tell your neighbor that when you get broken down it's just so God can build you up Ebenezer I need you to know that your breakthrough is on the way but on the way to your breakthrough there's going to be a breakdown you've got to come out of your comfort zone you've got to step out on faith and realize that it's easy for Jesus to do anything. It's easy for Jesus to move mountains. Your breakdown is going to come when he moves in your faith. But believing doesn't come cheap. you got to step out on faith because for Jesus... What's impossible for you is possible for him. It's easy for Jesus to feed the hungry. It's easy for Jesus to quench a dying thirst. It's easy for Jesus to heal sick bodies and put light in blind eyes. If you need to know that it's it's easy for Jesus if it's hard for you, but you've got to have faith the size of a mustard seed. You've got to have faith that when it gets dark at noontime, you believe in God. You've got to have faith when the chips are stacked against you. You gotta have faith when all of life crumbles around you. Don't wither in the face of your test because I got good news that your test is only a test from God but the testing of your faith must produce patience and patience is what's going to get you through because when you get patient you learn to wait on the Lord when you're patient you learn to wait on the Lord and be of good courage your greatest obstacle in your life has nothing to do with your enemy your greatest obstacle to faith in your life is not the sickness that's ravaging your body your greatest battle Battles is not with faith. Your greatest battle is with unbelief. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. I've got good news.
hands for somebody. You came to the right place on this day. More faith is good and more faith is better. But Jesus does not require you to have perfect faith to move on your behalf. Jesus doesn't test how much faith you have before he answers your prayers. All Jesus needs you to do is believe in his name. Believe in his power. Believe he can believe he can heal your diseases believe he can open doors that no man can shut believe that he can he can when nobody else can he can when mama can't he can when the doctors can't he can when the world won't he can is there a witness who knows he can he can he can do you believe wave your hand and say help my unbelief help I'm on my way help I believe I believe uh, look at the rain look at the rain falling I'm so God, I'm so glad that God is good because four months ago, if on a Sunday morning we had a woke up with rain falling from the sky, we would have canceled and posted a sermon online four months ago. If it had been raining on Saturday, I would have gotten phone calls from the faithful saying, Pastor, are we going to have church tomorrow? But I'm glad that God is good. I'm glad that from the second Sunday in June, God made a way for us to be here every Sunday. He cleared the clouds. He rolled away the thunder so we could come together. And I tell you right now, I believe in God. I believe he'll do it if I ask him. I believe that whatever my God wills, it will happen. Do I have a witness who knows that even in the rain, I'm going to give him praise. Even when I'm down and out, I'm going to give him praise. Even when trials come, I believe. When sickness is in my body, I believe. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Is there a witness who knows? I believe. Shout yeah, shout yeah, shout yeah, yeah, yeah. Every Sunday since June, God has been preparing us for today, reminding us that when, even 
when the rain falls, there's room to praise God. He'll make a way out of no way. Ebenezer, doors of the church are open. And I'm of the mind that even with the rain falling, Look at what faith will do. Even in the rain, Reverend Jordan comes out to issue the invitation. Don't be afraid of the rain. God sent the rain. There's a blessing in the rain. Don't worry. The old saying says, don't worry whether or not the sun is going to come out. Wake up ready to give God praise. If you're here today, I issue a challenge, a faith challenge, a believing challenge to somebody in this parking lot today to forsake the rain. Get out of your car and say yes to Jesus. Are you here today? Wherever you are, if you have not yet committed your heart and your life to Christ, now's the time. On a rainy Sunday, this is your moment it's your moment it's your moment won't you commit today won't you decide I believe in spite of the circumstances I'm turning my life over to Christ in spite of what my mind is telling me my heart belongs to him are you here? Come on, Are you here? Come here? I've got Jesus an answer for you. I've got an answer for you. Jesus and his name is, is Jesus. Oh, his name is Jesus. Won't you say it with me? His name is me. Jesus. Commit my everything Bring your to that name. I believe him. Jesus is calling. Won't Bring you come? Your Won't you come? You now is your time. You now is your time. Come as you are. Now is your time. doors of the church are open. Come to me, say, come My brothers and sisters, God is in this place. He's moving right now. He's moving. And if you're here today, you ought to, you ought to open your arms wide and let him fill the empty spaces in your life do you believe I know the world doesn't give you much to believe in but I'm giving you something that you can believe on when the world falls apart his name is still Jesus his name is still Jesus where are you just wave your hands. Wave your hand. Wave your hand. Worship. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him.
Facebook Live you now. You if you're watching oh, on our website, he said we invite you to pick up the phone and call us. Send us an email. Reach out to us. Let us know that, that there's something oh, about you. Jesus that you don't oh, understand, you can come. but you want to know more. Just as you are. He'll answer you. He will answer you. We want to help you listen for his answer. We want to help you understand. We want to help you see how good he is. To God be the glory for the great things he has done, is doing. And will do in the future. It is Communion Sunday. You can come to me. As we prepare our hearts and our minds. In the Baptist Church, there are only two ordinances, and I say only, but I don't mean to lessen it because they provide the cornerstones for this commemoration, this remembrance of our Lord and Savior. It does not tell us how often we should do this. He simply leaves it up to us. He says, this do as often as you do it in remembrance of me. Holy Communion is but one of the two ordinances. The other is baptism. An outward expression of an internal conversion. But here we stand ready to tell Christ thank you as we reenact the Last Supper on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread the disciples came to Jesus asking him Master where wilt thou that we should prepare for you to eat the Passover and he said to them go into the city to such a man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I'll keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had commanded them. They made ready the Passover. When evening had come, he sat down with the twelve. And he said, one of you will surely betray me. And each one of the disciples began to say, as they felt exceedingly sorrowful, they began to say, Lord, is it I? And Jesus said, he who dips his hand with me in the dish is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe be unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, who was betraying him, said, Lord, is it I? Jesus says, you 
have said so. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, because you're good. We thank you, O oh God, because you have allowed us to see the works of your mighty hand that we might believe. So God, we testify just as the Father in Mark 9 today. We believe. Help our unbelief. Now consecrate these earthly elements. Transform them to their sacred purpose. This cup, oh God, become your blood. This wafer, oh God, becomes your body. God, help our unbelief. We, have, we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. While they were eating, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat ye all of it. And likewise, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, this cup is the blood of the New Testament shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you that I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until I drink it new with you in my Father's house. Take and drink ye all of it. Thank you, Jesus. It is said that after they had supper, and after they had sung and hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Ebenezer, be blessed. As you leave this parking lot, we ask you to drive carefully. Be safe. Remember, God loves you. So does your pastor. And you can't do a thing about it. Be blessed. Have a beautiful week. We'll see you Wednesday night.